This marble head, now detached from its body, was one of thousands of portraits representing Faustina the Elder, a Roman empress who lived at the height of the empire in the second century. Her images in stone, metal, and paint would have been seen by millions throughout an empire that extended from Scotland to Syria. Hair was a prime expression of a Roman woman's identity. For the Empress Faustina, hairdressers created an elaborate coiffure composed of soft waves combed back into a complex braid. It has long been debated whether hairstyles such as Faustina's can be made using a woman's natural hair. Did the sculptor accurately reproduce a hairdo Faustina wore in real life? To answer these questions, a contemporary hairstylist undertook a reconstruction of Faustina's hair. We know that wealthy Roman women had female slaves who were specialized hairdressers. Although this stylist worked alone, it was not uncommon in antiquity for several slaves to work on their mistress's hair at one time. The model has thick curly tresses that resemble the texture of ancient Mediterranean hair. Her hair may be shorter than Faustina's, but as we shall see, this was no deterrent to reproducing the intricacies of her style. The stylist begins by combing and dividing the hair into sections for the braid. He will make six braids in all, three on each side of the head. He loops the braids from one side up to the crown of the head. He then anchors them with pins. Pins of precious materials such as metal and ivory have been found in many women's tombs. The stylist repeats the process on the other side, this time carrying the braids over the others. This creates a series of overlapping forms that catch the light as it plays across the surface of the hair. The sculptor of the Mount Holyoke Faustina has captured this same effect with the chisel and drill. Similarly, the die cutter of this gold coin manages to show the light flickering over Faustina's waved curls. When we see a finished sculpture, we tend to forget that the depicted person had millions of individual strands that did not necessarily behave. In accordance with ancient tradition, the stylist warms beeswax between his hands in order to slick the hair and keep errant hairs in place. Controlled hair had moral connotations for the Romans. A well-groomed woman conveyed her cultus, a Latin word meaning culture. In contrast, the loose hair of barbarian women looked wild and unkempt. They had yet to be civilized, that is, Romanized. As a crowning feature, Faustina wears a nest of concentric rings of tight, thin braids. We will never know whether this was made of Faustina's own hair or whether it was a separate hairpiece. The stylist said it would be possible to make Faustina's entire coiffure without attachments if the sitter's own hair were long enough. For women who were not so endowed, hair pieces such as the several long braids that the stylist uses would have been necessary. Indeed, an expensive hair piece of imported locks could have a certain cachet. To Christian and Roman moralists, however, such artifice was one more sign of female extravagance and decadence. A modest woman went out in public with her head and body covered. That Faustina, Rome's first lady, chose to wear a hairstyle requiring such obvious expense and effort suggests that it must have had a positive meaning for most of Roman society. Conceived like a work of art itself, a woman's coiffure was part of an overall image that, together with her pose and costume, presented her as a unique individual of high social and moral standing. As the final touch, the stylist gives his model a metal band that holds the front of the arrangement in place and articulates the different zones of the stacked coiffure. 
Others might interpret this element in the Mount Holyoke Faustina as a leather band or cloth ribbon. Whatever the sculptor intended, this element elevates the Empress's height, thereby enhancing her monumental look. This exercise in reconstruction took approximately two and a half hours. In the stylist's opinion, a skilled hairdresser, familiar with the style and aided by one or two assistants, could have executed it in less than an hour. With this hairstyling, the model has been transformed into a classical ideal of female beauty. Her hair's center part emphasizes the symmetry of the face and its overall contour shapes it into a perfect oval. This image is a fitting expression of the perfect goddess that Faustina became after her death, and also of the self-image of the Roman Empire at its height during the golden age of the second century.